I initially asked about whether you were working a hospice at that point because I figured, you know, that line of work, Trent, as we discussed in a prior episode and as you speak, you know, so elegantly all the time, how that affects your perspective in life. So a, as your time as a hospice nurse or during or now, has that made you reflect more on your past losses in any beneficial way? Like, have you um, used that, anything you've seen or, or experienced in relation to your own loss or do you just kind of keep those? No, I definitely, it's not that I keep them separate. I do feel like there is something about like, um, you know, like being a hospice nurse and watching people die uh, and helping, right? Helping that process and educating. It does feel different than like sudden loss and grief, right? Like that. So I never like associated my like hospice work with like Shauna's death because it feels different. You know, she didn't have this gradual death. She died suddenly. It feels more like a lost grief. Like, whereas in hospice, you have to kind of watch this drawn out, um, slow death, which some people would think is worse. You know, it just depends. Um, but I don't, so I don't, it's a different feeling for sure. I don't really, but in general, um, both of those experiences have made me super grateful to get older, you know, to age. And to enjoy life and to enjoy health and to know that life is short. I do feel like having many people who I suddenly lost at a young, at a young age um, has definitely made me understand that life is short and like the moment is the moment and you have to be in it um, almost to a fault. Like I had to go to therapy to like really to actually like relax on that because it was such a thing of like, I need to make the most of my life. I need to make the most of this because it could all end any minute. I need you to know? nail this parallel parking spot perfectly. I know, it's like to relax. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I had to like, I actually had to like learn how to also just enjoy the moment. But yeah. but like working in hospice and, and um, that has also led me to be like, wow, um, I'm so grateful to age is the biggest thing. I think- um, I should, I mean, I think all humans feel weird about aging, but women, especially and in Los Angeles, and I feel really, really grateful that like, I don't have that in me. Like I really feel lucky. That's beautiful. Cause you know, I'm, yeah, I think you just think about that naturally, the older you get and uh, let alone our own mortality, but there is like, I have some friends that they still bring up like college. Like the only thing they talk about is like college. And I'm like, I right, don't like, come on. Like we got, there's more to life. Yeah. We're going up. Let's go up. My point is, I think there, there is a beauty in, in getting older. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful perspective because this wisdom with getting older. I think, mm -hmm. you know I mean? I think people experience certain things earlier and they gain that wisdom at a younger age, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a, our body, might, my body might be deteriorating, but so we can still take care of that in other ways. But the wisdom that comes with age and experience, it makes life can get better. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. With that wisdom, wisdom makes life so much better. Oh yeah. And so I just, we got to flip that perspective on the aging process. Yeah. People oh. who are like, oh, the good old days. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, I think, I think it was a great time too. I yeah. love those days, but I also love these days. For sure. And I think that's, that's a beautiful perspective because I, I don't know. I feel like life, it's not over. <laughs> it's not over before it's over. I feel like those people that are looking in the back, they feel like they've already rolled over and died. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not a good thing. Mm-mm. So what's going on with you in hospice right now? So you're saying you're like, what's new in the hospice world? Anything, anything you need to report? <laughs> how do you get your content? You know what I mean? Like, well, what are you, what are you constantly thinking? Like, how do you? Uh, oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> there's so much to say. Yeah, yeah, it's endless. I do feel like um, there are main topics that I really want people to know. And like, as you get more, I mean, you know this too, as you get more followers, like you kind of have to repeat a lot of the things because yeah. they're not all going back and watching your other 400 videos you have. So I do feel like I have main topics that I want people to really know about. Hmm. And then what are my, those main topics? the main topics are what it looks like to die, like what your body will literally look like, the things you're going to see. Oh, you, did you put, po you post something about the death rattle not long ago? Uh-huh. Yeah, that one was, that was. Oh, like the actual like death you, rattle? You posted it, you actually, you gave the trigger yeah, warnings, man. et cetera, oh, et cetera. Man. I mentioned that recently. Like I saw it and that one, that one hits. Yeah. You know, like you've, you've, I mean, you post other videos that, you know, are definitely super like emotional, but that one was like, oof, that was, yeah. one, I'm sure I missed other videos, but that one was very real. There was a really good one, the the death rattle one and the changes in breathing. Cause those are the two that really upset people the most if they don't know what they are. Do you want to explain think... for people listening that don't know what the death, do you want to explain? Yeah, that? yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're we're, yeah. we're going to remove the dead talks logo and this is going to be on your TikTok. Don't worry. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So the death rattle. First off, it's the death rattle is an awful name. The real name is called terminal secretions, which also kind of sounds bad. Um, but it's very. Uh, so here's the thing. It is a death is a natural part of life. And I know we can like say that over and over and over again, but that is what we really need to like take in. It's natural. Our bodies are biologically built to do it. And the more you watch it, like myself or anyone else that works in this world, you see the same things over and over and over and over and over again. And that's how we know this is a natural part of death and dying. So one of those things are, is called terminal secretions. And they call it the death rattle because you hear it right before they die. So they call it the death rattle. And a lot of people think it's their loved one drowning on their fluids. So it, they think their lungs are filling up. And because of that, they're like suffocating or drowning. And that couldn't be further from the truth. That's It's not coming from their lungs. You and I and everyone are listening are, are creating saliva in our mouths because our bodies are miraculous and they do that for us unconsciously. And we unconsciously swallow the saliva that we're creating all day long. At the end of life, your body is not working as well as it usually does. So it's still creating saliva. Sometimes it'll have you swallow it. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes the muscles here are really weak and you're just not swallowing and you're so unconscious that your body is still creating saliva, but it's not swallowing it. So it collects in your mouth. And then your mouth is hanging open because you also have really relaxed uh, facial muscles. So the muscles are hanging open and then you're breathing through your mouth. And with every breath, it sounds wet because like air is going mm. over those secretions. And they might not even, it might not even be a lot of secretions, but it will still create this loud noise. So you get this death rattle or like a gurgle. And people really associate that with something awful happening. And it's like the most natural thing ever. We can do things for it. We would never suction. Like when I was a ICU nurse, all we did was suction people all the time. We would never do that because that actually your body realizes there's like something unnatural in the mouth. So it'll create more saliva. So it actually makes it worse if you keep suctioning it. So you don't want to, you don't want to suction it. Um, you could turn someone over and the saliva will just come out of their mouth. You can give them medication to dry it up, but that also creates dry mouth, which is uncomfortable. So a lot of times with just through education, we say, Hey, it's really normal. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. It's not causing your loved one, um, any pain or suffering. They also will have changes in breathing. So they're not going to breathe like we breathe. That's also okay. It's literally the body doing what it needs to do to slowly shut down and, your calcium levels increase. All these things are happening so you're really fully unconscious on your own. Mm. Um, and your body is just slowly shutting down. And because of that, you're having all these changes. And it's really normal. But people aren't used to seeing it, so they freak out. So there's a consistent timetable for when that happens. I just usually – I was called a death rattle for a reason. Like is that – Yeah. Close, how close usually does that – that's usually a few a few hours to a few days. Oh, so it's that close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A few hours to a few days. So people, yeah, if you start hearing that, but if they are like awake and alert and like talking to you and have like a gurgly, because that can happen too. That's not the death rattle. That's like they just need to clear their throat or they have like really weak muscles. So they have to have like other things going on. Like they have to be unconscious, mm -hmm. usually changes in breathing. There's other things happening along with the death rattle. Got it. And so that was one of the topics. You just, yeah. Is that, was the second it. one was the breathing or is that part of the video? No, that's a part of it. That's yeah. like part of like what it looks like. That's one of the main things I like to talk about, all the different things, all the different ways people look when right. they die. Right. Um, because so often people are like, my loved one suffered, they X, Y, and Z. And it's like, oh, they just, they just explain the dying process and no one told them that's what it looks like. Um, the other things are like the different phenomena that happen at the end of life, like people visioning, seeing dead relatives, dead loved ones, dead pets. The other one is the rally where they have, um, uh, they have like a burst of energy right before death for a few hours to a couple days. And then they suddenly die. There's like the death reach where they reach up and they're like reaching for somebody or the death stare where they're staring at someone, um, um, those pe people love hearing stories about that. And those things are not something that I share because I um, want to try to convince people that there's something better out there. It's more that that's what we see on mm. like a daily basis. It happens all the time. So it's something um, 
that's important, I think, to let people know. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm so it, it's very it's very interesting to a lot of people because of that reason, and some people might take it the wrong way. Like yeah. it's, but I think the fact that it is institutional and it's something that you guys correct me if I'm wrong. You, that's part of the educational process. Everything you just mentioned, especially with seeing the dead relatives or whatever. Yeah, we we like have to talk about that because people will think my my husband needs medicated. He's seeing his dad. Um, his dad's been dead. And we have, so we try to educate prior to it happening. So one, they know that this means that death is usually a few weeks away. That's a, that's standard. Like if you start seeing dead relatives, usually they're going to die within the next few weeks. Um, and <sighs> that as long as they're cool with it, as long as they're not like being hurt by it, or they're not like, uh, cause sometimes there's, if there's agitation along with that, or they're paranoid or they think or the devil's life. after the, yeah, <laughs> the devil's after them or something like we, I wouldn't consider that visioning. I would consider that them having some, some issues, uh, the delirium or paranoia that's not associated with visioning. Visioning is very specific, very clear, very calming. Um, and usually a few weeks to about a month before someone dies. Yeah, that's so interesting. So it's the once again that it's it's so you know it's so consistent, and you guys educate each other on that and the patients and whatnot. That's one of those things. Kind of yes and no, relating it to your story about the psyche that mentioned your nicknames. It's like that happens so often, specifically in hospice. I don't know how. Like, how do you? Not that we're here to argue or prove anything, but it's just. It's like undisputable. It's like that happens all the time. But then it's a question of, okay, is it is it something like that, you know, yeah. the end, like afterlife type stuff? Or is it I know, something our body does and it, and it I don't know. Like, does, has anyone gotten that deep on determining exactly what that is or do they not put a stamp on it that it's the afterlife or anything like that? They We kind of know what it's not, right? So like a lot of people will write in my comments like, oh, it's the oxygen leaving the brain, which doesn't even make sense. But like they'll say like they're they're not oxygenating well enough so they don't have enough oxygen in their brain so they're hallucinating or they're delusional. And that's just not true. So we know things that it's not. It's not that because people are oxygenating well when this is happening. They're not minutes before death like people think that it – it happens like minutes. It's usually a few weeks before death. Mm. So it's not something like that. Um, it's not medication driven because um, we keep track of medications and certain medications are on. And, you know, sometimes it can be medication driven, but usually they have other symptoms mm. when it is medication driven. Right. So we know things that it's not that a lot of people think it is. Um, but we don't, you know, it could be like a release of DMT. People say, you know, there's definitely theories, but um, nothing proven. And that's why it's kind of like, that's why I, I wouldn't die on the hill that it's for sure them seeing their dead relatives. The hill I die on is that like, I know what happens. Yeah. I don't know why it does, but I know it. 